Hey there guys, it's Silas, and welcome back to Silas' week of super. And welcome to the Powerpuff Girls, Defenders of Townsville. Oh yeah, who, who remembers the Powerpuff Girls? Just, just me? Okay. Fair enough. Weird thing about this game, you can't get it anymore on Steam. And at first I thought that maybe it was a licensing issue. But considering it's developed by Cartoon Network Games... Surely they have the rights to Powerpuff Girls. I mean, they they are the network where it started. It was listed as a cartoon cartoon back in the day. So I don't know why the hell this has been pulled from Steam. But, nonetheless, when this game came out, I beat the shit out of it. Because it is a really nice nod to the old series, as well as the 2014 reboot. In fact... If we go to settings, I believe. Visual style, modern or classic? Naturally, I play it in the classic style because I grew up watching this cartoon and it was ridiculous. And as you can see in the background, it changes the design. Just to prove it again. Yeah, I don't so much like the modern style. Nah, not a fan. We want the classic Powerpuff Girls with their bright and vibrant nonsense. Let's dive in and start a new game. Unfortunately, I can't load a save because this game doesn't use cloud saves. And even if it did, I don't think those cloud servers exist anymore. Right. Halfway through the game, you do unlock Mojo's Key Quest. It's basically a second campaign. It's kind of... It's kind of fun, but... You want the Defenders of Townsville stuff because it's hilariously stupid. Right, we're not playing on casual. Ugh, filthy casuals. Let's go normal. Save slot one. The city of Townsville. A hustling, bustling metropolis full of... Wait, that's a little too much hustle and bustle. What's Mojo up to? <laughs> You'll notice all the voice roles in this have been redone. Mojo Jojo again. We're on our way. You seriously think you can beat us with those puny robots, Mojo? Ah, uh, we could trash those tin cans in our sleep. Yeah, if we could sleep through all that noise! Ha! The robots were just to attract you here, which, as you can see, they have done with the utmost efficiency indicated by your current presence in this location right this moment. But now, I, Mojo Jojo, will finally defeat you, the Powerpuff Girls, once and for all! For Mojo Jojo's voice is a little different from how it used to be. But then again, after so many years of doing that, your throat is going to be ruined. So, Mojo. The Powerpuff Girls have lost all knowledge of their powers. This is looking like a bad day in Townsville. Bad day indeed. Whoa, what happened? When I find Mojo, I'm gonna punch him so hard he'll... He'll... Uh, wait, how do I punch again? Annoying thing about this game, does not use WASD. Arrow keys only. And, of course, no tutorial. And I like, I do like the fact that they haven't lost their powers. They've just lost memory of them. So they've still got their powers. They just have no idea how to use them. Aha! What's this? A and D to punch. See, I would have much preferred that to be on the mouse. But having it this way around on the keyboard is very, very weird. Die, robot! Die! And as you can see, it's a it's a classic 2D brawler. But this game plays very much on the nostalgia for the old series. I know it was designed to promote the 2014 reboot. But if most players are like me, they will have gone going to the options, changed to the classic style, because that's what we remember. And because it's a classic style, you may notice some pixelation around the character model. That's actually an option. You can turn that off and have it literally be as smooth as the cartoon. But I think adding the pixelation to the old characters, well, the old designs, does lend it a certain amount of charm. Die. 
Now, you notice that A or D to punch. Say I wanted to punch left. Punch right. No, you only ever punch forwards. That's kind of annoying. If you're going to give us two controls, at least give us the option to have directional punches and add a bit more challenge to it, because this game is very easy. Thank you. Power points. Where we go? Auto map. Keep track of where you've been. Oh yes, that's an important thing, because this game has a bit of Metroidvania in it. Oh dear, so many robots! You call these killer robots? No, I call them a pain in the ass. Fortunately, we kick ass. Die, preferably horribly and painfully. Oh dear. I need to find a power point to let me to jump. I can understand the whole not remembering your powers thing, but not remembering basic motor skills is a bit of a stretch there, uh, Cartoon Network games. Punch grenades to send them back at robots, okay. So we can return their projectiles to their faces. Aha! Power points. Finally, we get the chance to fly. Because all the Powerpuff Girls can fly. That is their shtick. Yes, die horribly. I always like to get that enemies cleared bonus. I don't think you actually have to. Some rooms do lock you out. Ah. Very important. That's how you save. You just kind of float over the thing. It's, it's a nifty little system. I'm not going to lie. I kind of like it. Not this complicated doing stuff. Oh yeah. Taste your own saw blade. Ooh, I have some health. Thank you. Now you may notice as well that if you saw the intro or the title screen that there's no trail behind me as I fly. I haven't picked that power up yet. I haven't picked up the power of fast flight yet. Later on in the game, you do pick up the power of fast flight and you get your nice awesome trail. That is unbreakable at the moment. Okay, noted. Now, combining Metroidvania with the Powerpuff Girls does kind of have one major downfall. The flying. Because I always thought the main advantage of a Metroidvania is certain areas are locked out for a good long while until you've got the power or the item that allows you to go that way. But with the Powerpuff Girls, they can fly, so they can go anywhere. How does this game deal with it? It just kind of locks off certain areas with those ridiculous unbreakable blocks until you've got enough of your own superpowers back to deal with them. Now, you can change between the girls. I cannot remember which button it is. Aha! You also get this uh, silly boosters menu that you can pick up. You can build boosters for things, and that's how you get your fast flying and stuff. Right, that's the room I'm in. That's all got save points and things. Okay. Once I figure out how to change the girls, we will change. Because even even though Buttercup is amazing, because she just want to kick, she just wants to kick everything's ass. So why wouldn't you love her? She wants to kick the world's ass. Stop shooting yourself. What else you got? Yeah, what else indeed? Boom, boom, boom. New booster available. Damage reduction. That's always handy. You just go to the, e the esque menu. Damage reduction. Apply. 
Now I take now I take less damage, so I've got I've got some of my super invulnerability back. But yeah, this is what I mean by it locks off certain areas. I can't do jack with that now. So back we go. And what's weird about this, it's got like the Metroidvania sensibilities, but it just doesn't have the application, shall we say. Because another aspect of Metroidvania games is respawning enemies. This does not have that. It has a set number of enemies per room, and once they're cleared, they're cleared. That's what the that enemies cleared thing comes up with. Thank you for your health, sir. Who makes a robot that is essentially just a saw blade that flies? Apparently Mojo Jojo, but never mind. So what you have what happens when you have an incompetent monkey in charge of the saw? I'll have the health, thank you! And down. Enemies cleared, room fine. Right, what else we got? Let's have a look at my map. Where are we? Okay, so we can go through there and into there and yeah. How do I get down there? I've got to go into another room. Okay. Later on in the game as well, you do get some quite ridiculous rooms which are just essentially horde mode. The ending's a bit of an anti-climax considering some of the hordes you have to fight. But fortunately, the fighting does get a little more interesting. At the moment we just got our punch, but later on you get stuff like shockwaves and other weird abilities. Because, let's face it, it's the Powerpuff Girl, it doesn't need to make sense, it's just a light-hearted comedy thing that exists and everyone likes it. What's weird for me is, I'm just going to go on about the TV series now, I, I never thought I'd get into it, but it was always on Cartoon Network and it was always just before something decent, or at least something that I thought would be decent. So I always ended up watching like the last half and then eventually I just kind of liked it. It's one of those creep it's one of those games that just creeps into your like viewing spectrum. Everyone has them. There you go, health module. Nice and handy. Die. Die die. Didn't even break a sweat. Right, where am I going now? This map becomes almost invaluable. As it does in most Metroidvanias, actually. Okay, so there's a tunnel on the far right room that I haven't been through yet. See ya! Sorry, I have a destination to get to and a video to make. I can't sit around defeating all of you assholes again. Right, we're heading right, which means we've got to go left, of course. Dead. <laughs> I love the fact they like take a certain amount of damage and then just end up flying away on fire to explode until they hit something solid. Example: they don't explode until they take a third point of damage. That's quite funny. So after two hits, they're like, "Oh, I just can't continue." Ah, damn it! I can't shrink down. Bugger. Right, so we've got to find something that will disable that yellow beam. Stupid robot. Ah! Ass! What's the button to change girls again? I really want to show off the other ones. Yeah, you may notice the tutorial in this is quite, uh, quite absent. I don't know if that's a deliberate design choice, but I hope it's not. 
I mean, I don't even know why I'm telling you all this, because it's not like you can get all of it. It was pulled from Steam. God knows why. The mysteries of game publishing will never be wasted on me. It's a very, very strange and sneaky science. That I will never claim to understand, but... Die! Die, all of you! There you go, choose your place to die. Oh yeah, I kick ass. Save point! Okay, so I'm gonna get through there and bash that thing open. Right then, we'll go through the bottom on the bottom. There is a lot of exploration in this. Oh look, can't go through the bottom one either. Nuts. Right, back to more exploring. Right, so, I can't do the bottom one there. That top room looks okay. God, I'm glad I've got a damage reduction. These robots are... are really posing a challenge. They're just floating kind of aimlessly in the air. Oh, all of these are covered by those stupid laser beams. Ha! <laughs> You will all die! Thank you. Where else can I go from here? Okay, there's two over this side. Top up! Aha! A button! Power points! Energy blast! Punch so hard you release a blast of energy. Yes! This way I don't have to get up close and personal and I can break these through through the beams. See? You have to relearn your powers and then learn to control them. Unfortunately now it does mean that the actual combat becomes a bit easy. So of course the game has to start throwing massive waves at you. Ah, you weren't expecting a saw blade, were you? I'll have that, thank you. Saw blade! Is no match for my mighty shockwaves. Ha! And... Oh, that was a long one. That's what she said. Yes, no sword blade will attack me. What do you do? Well, you've done a thing. Yeah, when you can fight at long range like this, it, it does become a bit of a bullet hell game. And that's kind of cool. I mean, I play a fair number of bullet hell shooters, as you know. When I can, like... Well, you know when I can be asked. Uh, but I never thought I'd play a Powerpuff Girls game that basically ended up doing this. Because now I've got, like, the energy blast, almost all the enemies are going to have projectiles from this point on. Is this a dead end? Doesn't look like it. No, there should be two exits. Okay, you're blocked off. There should be one below. Somewhere. Okay, so I've got to get past that green block. A lot more exploring. Yeah, this game is... It's a shame it's not available anymore, because I can see this being the kind of thing you'd play for about... 10, maybe 20 minutes like I am, and just never bother with it again. But of course, that does cause the inevitable question if I uninstall this will I ever be able to download it again if it's anything like the Deadpool game when that got pulled granted it's back on Steam don't don't remind me if it's anything like that then odds are I probably will still be able to download it I'm not gonna bother uninstalling it though just in case because I actually value the games I have 
to be fair, I even, I even value some of the shit ones. Because sometimes you just want to play something so bad, it can't possibly make your day any worse. This, however, is nothing like that. This is classic Cartoon Network. Just reminding us of what was once a good thing. So, thank you all for watching. And until Silas' week of super continues, I've been Silas. I'm sorry I couldn't show you any of the characters but Buzzercup, but she does kick ass. And I will see you next time.